Hey y'all, I wanna talk about five myths when it comes to pushing your baby out. There's so much information out there that is not accurate information and a lot of us who have a lot of people who tend to share their birth stories with us or may have shared their own experience in labor can really just share a bunch of misinformation and cause us to be more scared or more fearful of something that doesn't need to be scary at all. So I wanna talk about five myths when it comes to pushing that hopefully will give you a different perspective and make you more excited and empowered to go into your birth experience prepared. So the first myth is that pushing is the hardest part. So many women, every time I, I've posted a lot of things about pushing lately, so I felt like this was necessary for me to talk about. They're saying, oh my gosh, I'm so scared of pushing. I think I'm gonna tear, all these things. That's a myth. Pushing does not have to be the hardest part. For a lot of women, Pushing is the easiest part because that's the relief and it should be pretty much the shortest part of labor and um, it, it doesn't have to be scary. You know when it's coming. If you know how to listen to your body, you'll know when it's coming. And most times, if you listen to your body, it's the easiest part. And for so many women, including myself, pushing was 10, 15 minutes max. Some people push their babies out in one push and it was the easiest part because we knew how to listen to our bodies. So if it helps you at all, I want to dispel that myth of pushing being the hardest part. Obviously there's always a risk of tearing, but you can do a lot of things to prepare yourself ahead of time, like massages, like stretching, like dates, and other things that will help soften your cervix. Um, and learning breathing techniques. So it doesn't have to be the hardest part. It doesn't have to be the scariest part. For some women, this is like the relieving part of labor is actually getting to the pushing stage, which is stage two of labor. So that's the first myth. It is not the hardest part. It doesn't have to be the hardest part if you know what labor looks like and what to expect. The second myth is that you won't know when it's time to push. I don't know how many times I hear this. I don't know, how am I gonna know when it's time to push? How am I gonna know when I need to be pushing the baby out? And you will know. There's this thing called the fetal ejection reflex, which basically says that if you allow for your body and your baby to let you know when it's time to push, you won't have any control. And your body will push the baby out, whether you like it or not. And you won't be able to stop it. And so our goal here is to wait until that happens. The fetal ejection reflex happens and your body begins to push. So if you are confused, what do I look for? What does it feel like? For a lot of women, you may express something similar to feeling like you have to have a bowel movement. So if you are in a birthing environment, you're like, I think I have to go to the bathroom. I think I have to take a bowel movement or have a bowel movement. Most of the time you might see people kind of like scrambling around you because that could be you mistaking a bowel movement with your baby. And that's what it feels like. That's how we know it's time to push when it feels like, oh man, I think I gotta take a poop. Um, and so you will know if you wait, but if you try to rush the process, it may not be ready. You may not be ready to push and it may not be the time for you to push and you may end up pushing longer because you didn't wait for your body to let you know and your baby let you know. The third myth is that when you're 10 centimeters, it's going to be time to push. So just following what we just talked about, just because you're 10 centimeters, does not mean it's time to push. So if you decide to get cervical checks during your labor, you may be told you're at 10 centimeters and that let's get ready to push. That is a myth. I'm gonna repeat that. Just because you're 10 centimeters doesn't mean you need to start pushing. If your body has not told you it's time to start pushing, you do not need to start pushing. And the reason that is is because just because we're 10 centimeters does not mean our baby is engaged or ready to push. Your baby could be in a negative station, which means, or just not in a positive station. They could be at a zero station, they could be at a negative station, but they may not be in a positive station where we need them to be for when it's time to push. So negative station means that your baby could be like floating up here. Just because you're 10 centimeters doesn't mean your baby's head is right there and ready to be pushed out. Your baby could be up here and you could be 10 centimeters, but your baby still needs to descend a little bit more before it's time to push. And you'll know that because your body will tell you. Your baby could be right here at a zero station, right? Mid pelvis. Just because your baby's at a zero station 
in your 10 centimeters doesn't mean it's time to push because what's going to happen if your baby's up here or your baby's down here you're going to be pushing a lot longer and a lot harder to get your baby to even get to a place where it's time to push so wait wait until that fetal ejection reflex happens again you won't be able to stop it it's not going to be something that you control can control it's just going to happen without you even trying so even if you're 10 centimeters you need to wait if they tell you you're 10 centimeters and they say let's get started pushing you can say i want to wait until my body tells me it's time to push because it will okay there's no re you can hang out at 10 centimeters for an hour if you need to I would encourage you to move around, but at the end of the day, if your body's not telling you it's time to push, it's not time to push. So being at 10 centimeters is a myth for needing to actually start pushing. Um, the fourth myth is you have to strain and push really, really hard to get that baby out. So you gotta hold your breath, count to 10. That is a myth, okay? That would, to me, potentially signify that you are pushing a baby that's up here and that we're doing a lot of work we're doing a lot more work than we need to if you just wait until the fetal ejection reflex happens you can breathe your baby out if you saw my reel um, that I just posted if you haven't check it out it will tell you that instead of doing the hold your breath and count to 10 we should be breathing our baby out because again, if our baby is at a plus two station, which is what we want to happen, which means that baby's crowning, then there's not much we need to do but just breathe our baby out. And when you learn the proper breathing techniques, you can easily breathe your baby out of your body without doing any pushing whatsoever because your breath will have enough power behind it to push your baby out. Um, so I would encourage you, even though you may be told and coached to hold your breath and count to 10 and to bear down and to um, try to pretend like you're taking a poop, you're probably gonna do a little bit more damage than you want to because you're putting more pressure um, on that area and it doesn't need to be that way. It doesn't need to be that hard. It should be simple. We talked about that. This is the easiest part of labor. So um, that's a myth. We don't need to bear down hold our breath, count to 10. We can easily breathe our baby out if you learn how to wait and you learn the proper breathing techniques to do that. And then the fifth fifth myth is that you won't know if you have an epidural. That you won't know when it's time to push because you'll have an epidural, you can't feel anything. Um, that's not always the case. Just because you receive an epidural doesn't mean your, your labor is going to be feeling free. It doesn't mean you're just gonna be sitting there. That doesn't always happen for every single woman and you're just sitting there watching TV and you have no idea what's going on. Most women who have epidurals still feel an immense amount of pressure. So this could be challenging for women who have back labor because if you have back labor, um, you're sitting there, you don't really have as much mobility, but you still feel pressure and you can't really move around and you know kind of get into a more comfortable position. It might be more difficult. However, regardless of this situation, if you do have an epidural, um, you still, will feel pressure and you may feel more pressure when it's time to push. Now, research does show that women who have epidurals tend to be in the pushing phase for a little bit longer, but if you wait until your baby starts to push his or her way out because of the fetal ejection reflex, you could still benefit from a shorter pushing phase. Um, but you have to listen to your body. You have to be in tune with your body. Just because you're at 10 centimeters does not mean you need to start pushing, especially if you have an epidural. Again, the good thing about the fetal ejection reflex is that your baby's going to push their way out one way or the other. So um, even with an epidural, you can wait and you can allow that to happen and allow your baby to start crowning and pushing. And then at that point, you probably will feel some pressure um, and you can breathe your baby out. You don't have to do that unnecessary difficult pushing um so i hope that was helpful you always have time there's no rush i know we don't always want to be in labor for a long time but there's not a rush and if you wait for the fetal ejection reflex you can look that up and you learn how to breathe you don't have to be scared of pushing y'all pushing is the easiest part it can be the easiest and quickest part of labor and then you get to meet your baby on the other side so i want to just encourage you to Remove the fear of pushing from your brain. Get excited because this is kind of like the final lap 
of birth and you know exactly what to do so you can do it effectively and make it quick. Um, and it's gonna be great. It's it's gonna be great. You um, Somebody just talked about, oh my gosh, can I do a podcast? <laughs> if I had the time to do a podcast, I totally would. Um, but for now, I'm going to be doing it all through IG Live. But you can listen to it like it's a podcast if you want to. Um, but anywho, I just want to encourage y'all that it's not scary. It doesn't have to be scary. Stop listening to all these lies. Stop listening to all these myths that people want to talk about. Oh my God, I was pushing for four hours. I was pushing for two hours. First of all, if you were pushing for two and four hours, that's a problem. You should never be pushing for that long. Now, there are situations that may cause pushing to be a little bit more difficult. Um, they you might have big shoulders and you might have to get into different positions or the position that you're in is not ideal to be pushing in and you need to switch positions. However, if you use gravity, if you are in the right pushing position, which I'll talk about in the future video, different pushing positions, this is going to be the easiest part of labor. So hope this is encouraging. Share this, save this, rewatch it again, watch it again when you're in labor so that you can remember because you, you know, your brain can take you in a bunch of different places. So as long as you keep your brain in the right place and you're prepared for that, you can watch this in labor and remember that we're gonna wait. If you want to um, join me for Work Your Birth, I will be doing group coaching calls on that. So it'll be similar to this, but you can ask me questions directly um, and I will make sure that you are prepared from start to finish and for postpartum. So I got y'all. Just invest in yourself and trust yourself and you can do this. I'll talk to y'all soon.